Hello, this is Barry Nirmal. I am a computer guru, having spent my whole life in computing. You can find my books on computing by searching Google for quote, Barry Nirmal books, unquote. Please subscribe to my channel by clicking on the subscribe link below. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul Nirmal. In today's video, I'll be taking a high-level overview and discussion of disk partitioning styles and standards using a built-in Windows 10 utility called Disk Management. Disk partitioning is incredibly important with our computing storage devices, such as hard disk drives, solid-state drives, USB thumb drives, SD memory cards, etc. The reason being is that without partitions, any operating system, such as Windows 10, would not be able to read and write data to our storage devices, thus rendering them useless. For instance, many of us computing users have a physical drive inside of our desktop or laptop, and we're familiar with our C drive in File Explorer. That C drive is a partition which contains our Windows 10 OS, all of our applications, files, and folders. However, you may not know there are two other partitions on our physical drive as well a recovery partition to help us recover our Windows 10 OS in case it becomes corrupted, and also a boot partition, which helps our PC boot up to Windows 10 upon powering on. And you'll notice that you do not see these two partitions in the File Explorer because they've been purposely marked as hidden to prevent the average user from inadvertently disrupting them and causing our PC to be unusable. So Windows automatically hides these two partitions. But there are reasons why you as the end user may also want to partition your drive further. There are two main reasons. The first reason being is that if you want to install another operating system, such as an older version of Windows or Linux on another partition, thus dual booting your PC. And then the second main reason is that in the separate partition, such as we'll call it D drive, we can put many of our files, folders, pictures, music, etc. Therefore, in case we ever have to reinstall Windows on our C drive, all the files on D drive will be untouched. We won't lose them, and so getting back up to speed before reinstalling our PC will be much more faster and convenient. So without further ado, let's go over to my Windows 10 PC and get started. All right, I'm at my Windows 10 desktop, and I'm going to begin by launching Disk Management. To do that, you'll go to the Start menu, right-click on it, scroll up, and just click on disk management and there it's open looking at the disk management window you'll see this disk zero right here this is the one physical disk that's in my windows 10 pc which is a laptop and it is a solid state drive ssd with a capacity of 476.94 gigabytes and you'll see here this is my c drive and then here's a system reserved partition and then a recovery partition let me just warn ahead of time that we will not be touching these two partitions in any way as this can mess up our Windows 10 installation. What I want to do right now is partition my C drive further and create a new drive from that. So what I'm going to do is right click on my C drive and then go to shrink volume. And I'll take a few seconds to see how much space can be shrunk from it. Okay, so it says total size before shrink and they counted in megabytes about 487,000, which matches the 476 gigabytes right here. And it says about 18,000 megabytes. So about 18 gigabytes is available to shrink. So I can enter an amount up to that. So I'll just leave it the maximum amount and then I'll hit the shrink button. So there we are, it's created this 17.74 gigabytes that's now unallocated and it shrunk this by that 17 gigabytes. It's taken this away from here. So now my C drive has been reduced in size. If I do nothing with this unallocated space, essentially it's just going to waste. So I don't want to do that, so I'm going to right click on it and hit new simple vo volume. Hit next, and I want to use the full amount, about 18,000 megabytes. And I'm going to give it the D letter, although all of these are available for use, but I'll just give it the next letter after C, which is D. And hit next, leave everything as default and finish. So now it's opened up, it created a new D drive which I can see in my Windows Explorer right here. And I'm free to put any files I'd like on here. 
You may be asking that in my laptop, if I have one physical SSD drive, this disk zero, why would I want to create a new D drive? Why would I reduce my C drive by 17.74 gigabytes and put it in a brand new D drive? The reason why many computer users do this is if they have to reinstall their Windows 10 on their C drive, any files that are on their D drive will not be erased. Many computer users do not partition their drive in their PC. So in case they have to reinstall Windows 10, let's say because of a virus, they'll lose all their files and settings and they'll have to start over from scratch. Therefore, if you partition your drive and place many of your important files there, it'll be much more convenient for you to get up and running before you had to format your PC. Now let's say that I want to reverse that partitioning process and delete my D drive and take this space and merge it back into my C drive. That's very easy. I'll just right click on my D drive and go to delete volume. Anything here will be permanently erased, so be sure to back up any data before you delete a volume. So click on yes. So now my D drive has been deleted and now this is free space. And now I'll right click and go to delete partition. And now it's unallocated again. So now I go to C drive, right click, go to extend volume. So it says about this 18,000 megabytes, this 17.74 gigabytes is free and hit next and finish. So now it's been merged back into C drive and it's back to what it was before. What I've done now on my Windows 10 laptop is I've just plugged in an external USB hard drive. But as you can see in File Explorer, it's not showing up. I'm only seeing C drive, which is that internal SSD in my laptop. So what's going on? Let's go back into disk management and see what the culprit is. Looking inside disk management, we see a new disk has appeared, disk three. That is the USB external hard drive I plugged into my laptop. And we'll see there are three sections, unallocated, a recovery partition, and then another unallocated one. Because there's no active partitions here, that's why we're seeing nothing in the file explorer. So let's try to remedy that. In this unallocated, let's create a new simple volume. And we'll use up all the space, that 476 gigabytes. I'll give it D, the D letter. Just call it new volume. Everything's default. Hit finish. Give it a few seconds to create that new volume. And it's been created and it just showed up. So there's D drive, which is this part of my USB hard drive. But we'll see this other unallocated. So let's create another drive letter out of that as well. Right click this again, new simple volume, follow everything as before, use up all that space, 119 gigabytes. We'll give it E and hit finish and give that a few moments. And the process is complete. So looking in File Explorer, we now have D and E drives, and both of these belong to that same physical USB external hard drive I plugged into my laptop. So now that I've just created this D and E drives, let's go back into disk management to address something. Earlier when I plugged in this external USB hard drive for the first time, you notice that these two now D and E were unallocated, and this recovery partition is right in the middle. And I'll explain why this is here. This USB external hard drive was originally a laptop hard drive I pulled from an old laptop that had Windows 10 on it. And that's why this recovery partition is here. I also said earlier in the video, never to modify your primary partition and your recovery partition because that can damage your Windows 10 installation. However, we can make an exception here because we're not gonna install an operating system on disk three. I'm only gonna be using this to store data, files and folders. So I can safely modify this with no negative consequences. And the reason I want to modify this recovery partition and by modify, I mean delete it, is because let's just say I want one single partition that spans the entire drive. I just want to have D drive use up all of the 596 gigabytes available. I don't want a separate D drive and an E drive, but this recovery partition is in the way. When I right click on it, the only option available is help. So it seems like I can't delete it from disk management. So what can I do? Luckily there is an alternative way. Let's go to the start menu and type in CMD for command prompt. And for this, we have to run it as an administrator. So we'll right click and say run as administrator. Once it's opened, we're gonna type in the command disk part. Now let's type in list disk, which will show all the disks. So 
We see disk zero and disk three, which also showed up in the disk management console. Now I want to select disk three, which is that external USB hard drive. So I'm going to type in select disk three. So now it says disk three is now the selected disk. Next, I'll type in list partition. So it's showing three partitions and we just want to get rid of the one in the middle, that recovery partition. So I'm going to type in select partition one. Partition one is now the selected partition and to delete it, I'm going to type delete partition override. So this part successfully deleted that selected partition. Let's go into disk management and see what happened. And so that it's gone now and now it's unallocated. What I can do now is now that it's gone, I can delete both the D and E and then make them all unallocated and then create one single partition that uses up all of the 596 gigabytes. So I'll right click on the D drive first, say delete volume, and then I'll right click on E and also delete this. So now the entirety of that drive is unallocated space and I'm gonna create just one single simple volume or single partition. Use up all of that space. We'll just give it D drive and finish. So the process is complete. D drive has been created and it's using up all of that 596 gigabytes that's on my external USB hard drive. We can see it here also in disk management. I managed to get rid of that recovery partition that was in the middle that prevented us from merging everything into one single partition. So that's how you are able to remove any partition in the middle of your drive that's preventing you from creating one single partition that uses up all the space available thanks to the disk part utility in the command prompt. All right, I've just deleted that D drive. I've just deleted that partition off my external USB hard drive. So now all of the space is unallocated. The reason I've done this is now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the different types of partitions and also partition standards. The two types of partitioning styles or standards are GPT, which stands for GUID Partition Table, and MBR, which stands for Master Boot Record. To tell what kind your disk is using, for example, if I want to find out from my disk to that external USB hard drive, I'm going to right click here, go to Properties, go to Volumes, and under Partition Style, it'll tell you what type you have. So here currently I have the GUID Partition Table Style. Most computer users will not care if their disk is formatted as GPT or MBR. One reason you might care is, for instance, if you have a desktop PC and you purchase a brand new hard drive and put it inside your desktop PC, and then when you launch disk management, you might be presented with this window asking you if you want to format your new hard drive as GPT or MBR. It's important to choose the correct one as both of these have significant differences. I'll highlight the main differences between the two very quickly in this screenshot. The reason why I had removed all partitions from my external USB hard drive, this disk two, is this is the only way in disk management that you can convert from GPT to MBR or vice versa. Because we determined this disk was GPT, I'm now going to change it to MBR. So I'll right click and click on convert to MBR disk and it's finished. And just to make sure, I'll right click again, go to properties, volumes, and we'll see now the partition styles change to master boot record MBR. You may have seen earlier in the screenshot highlighting the differences between MBR and GPT that MBR has a limitation of four primary partitions or three primary partitions with an infinite number of logical partitions. Now that disk two has been converted to MBR, let's see if we can hit that limitation. So let's go ahead and create some partitions out of this unallocated space. So I'll right click, new simple volume, hit next, and I'll just make it a little small, I'll make it 50,000 megabytes, so roughly 50 gigabytes. So now we have one primary partition. Let's create another one. Again, I'll make it the same, 50,000. Now we have two. Let's make another one. Make it the same size. So now we have three primary. Let's see what happens when we make the fourth one. Again, we'll make it the same size. So now you will see a difference. These three are dark blue, indicating that these are primary partitions. Whereas the G drive is a lighter shade of blue, meaning it's a logical drive. 
and then the rest of it is free space. Let me try to create more partitions from this free space and see what happens. So we'll right click again, new simple volume, same space as before. So with everything finished, we now have one physical hard drive that has six drive letters. And we'll see that we have three primary partitions and then one extended partition, as you can see by this green border. And then inside this one extended partition, we have three logical drives. Now I'm going to delete all of these partitions and logical drives, convert this back to GPT, and then try to create partitions again and see what happens. Okay, once again, I removed all of the partitions and drives, all the spaces unallocated. It's been converted to GPT, and let's try to create new partitions from this again. So again, we'll do a new simple volume. I'll make it the same amount of space, 50,000 megabytes for each partition. So about 50 gigabytes. And let's see what happens. Let's make another one. So now you'll see I have four primary partitions, whereas if this disk was still MBR, this G drive would be an extended partition. So let's see if I can keep creating more primary partitions now that this is GPT instead of MBR. Okay, with everything done, now my physical external USB hard drive has a total of eight primary partitions, something that was impossible on MBR. Thank you so much for watching today's video on Windows 10 disk management utility and partitioning your storage devices. If you like this video, please hit the like button down below. And also, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already to subscribe to my YouTube channel as I'll be creating more YouTube content like this in the near future. Again, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Hello. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so by clicking on the subscribe link below. Also write your comments in the comment section below. Spread the word. You can share this video with your friends by clicking on the share button below. And you can share it with uh, WhatsApp, with Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and by sending email to your friends.